working through some more examples of uh, calculations involving uh, Newton's first law, second law, sorry, F equals MA, and also discussing the basic concepts of uh, our four forces. That's our topic for this video. Um, just some brief words on the problem solving techniques. Um, I'm going to record some separate videos for uh, solving a problem involving an elevator, a uh, problem involving an inclined plane, and then an Atwood's machine, uh, ropes and pulleys and masses. Um, so look for those other videos. But just in general with problem solving, start by reading the problem thoroughly all the way through. Then make a sketch. It doesn't have to be accurate, but make a, uh, a reasonable sketch labeling the quantities that are given in the problem, putting on vectors, uh, choosing a direction to be positive for the motion. Uh, very important to make a sketch to really uh, guide your thinking on how to come up with a solution for the problem. So be sure to make that sketch. And be sure you know which direction is positive and stick with that. Make sure that the numbers that you use represent uh, the direction of the motion that takes place. Uh, you, if you, many times you will have to break velocities into components. You may have to break acceleration into components. Uh, but uh, make sure that in one equation, all the numbers there represent some parallel uh, sense of direction. And don't mix horizontal and vertical numbers, for example. Um, so watch those other videos and work through examples in the textbook. Uh, work through examples in the student uh, solution manual. Ask questions. Now, a little bit of an abstract here, and we'll go through this relatively quickly. Uh, we know of four basic forces in the universe. There's the electrical force, and we have positive and negative charge. And it turns out magnetism is a result of, uh, of charge in motion. Uh, that will be covered in the second semester of the introductory physics class. But it's an important force if there is some net charge in the situation. In our universe, many times, objects are neutral. There's the same number of protons and electrons, for example. And the net charge is zero. And the electrical force is not a major influence. That's when gravitational force comes into play. And we'll take a, a deeper look at gravity in a future uh, chapter. Uh, it is much weaker than the electrical force. And we'll probably do a calculation of the uh, electrical uh, attractive force between a proton and electron and the gravitational uh, attractive force between a proton and electron, or uh, electrical repelling force between two electrons versus the gravitational attractive force between two electrons. Now the gravitational force is attractive. With electrical forces we can get attraction or a repelling force. So it comes in some more two varieties. But the gravitational force is attractive. In the second semester we'll talk about the atom and the nucleus and there the strong nuclear force plays a major role. It's stronger than the electrical force but it has a very short range about 10 to the minus 15 meters. 10 to the minus 15 meters is the only uh, distance where this force is important. Uh, it's a rough number. But, uh, this force allows protons to stay near other protons. These objects carry the same charge and uh, should repel each other and fly away out of the nucleus. The strong nuclear force holds them in the nucleus. And there's also attraction between protons and neutrons. We'll talk about that in the second semester. And then the weak nuclear force, well, it's not as strong as the strong nuclear force. It involves forces in the nucleus and important in radioactive decay. So that's just a little introduction uh, through there. A little bit more abstract on how forces occur. There is a model, and you know, so it's not exactly like this, but a model. Uh, two people uh, you know, playing catch with a basketball and this could be an example of a repelling force situation where there's some virtual particle uh, exchanged between uh, here they have a proton and a neutron being uh, interacting but uh, playing frisbee or playing basketball and this is a model that happens in the subatomic particles they exchange virtual particles particles are not detectable while they're moving from one object to the other. 
but cause either attracting or repelling force. So that's that's the model. We'll maybe investigate this a little bit more in the second semester. We're not going to go into it in the first semester. Uh, there is a search for these particles that are involved in uh, the subatomic forces. Very large pieces of equipment are needed in high energy to break apart subatomic particles and examine the forces that are, are present. Uh, so the CERN accelerator is a leading uh, uh, place where that, uh, that occurs. Um, then gravity is very interesting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit in second semester. But, uh, Einstein came up with a new way of modeling gravity instead of Newton's law of gravity that we're going to do this semester. Uh, Einstein uh, came up with a correct model that gravity is really the geometry of space that mass and energy can warp space, make it curved instead of flat. And this has been well tested by various experiments. Um, currently there's a great search underway for gravitational waves. Electromagnetic waves are light and we detect those. Um, there's a prediction that there should be gravitational waves that would distort space and this is being investigated but uh, as of 2014 not detected yet. And gravity is much weaker, the waves are much weaker than electromagnetic waves, than light. So that's a little uh, introduction to where we're headed. So keep reading and asking questions. And watch these other videos on examples of problem solving using F equals MA.